And welcome back to Backspace Academy. In this second lab on the API Gateway, we're going to look at creating a real application, a JavaScript application that will be hosted using Amazon S3, and it will use the API Gateway to create a dynamic component to that static website. Now, before we start using the API Gateway within our application, we need to make sure that cause or cross-origin resource sharing has been enabled. The reason being is that they, the API domain will be different to the domain that our static website will be running on. So we need to make sure that that is allowed. So the way that we do that is we go to resources and then we go to actions and then we enable cause. And we just click on enable cause. And we, we just replace those. And now we're ready to start writing our application. Now, to make life easier for you, I've created a GitHub repository that contains a, a template for using uh, Amazon API Gateway with S3 hosted websites. So you just go to the, uh, the, the link that is there in the lab notes and you'll get, you'll get to this page. So what you need to do is you need to uh, download that zip file and unzip it and then open up the app.js application. Okay, so now that I've downloaded that zip file, I've extracted it and I've gone into the JS folder and I've opened up app.js, which will contain the application code in JavaScript. It's a very simple application, it's only 30 lines or so of code. So the first thing we've got there is a click event listener. So when someone clicks on the button on the form, uh, that will invoke our get pet function. And so our get pet function will send that request off to our off to our REST API that we've created. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put our API endpoint because yours will be definitely different to that. So we go back to the management console and we, we're in stages. So we don't want to go to demo. Uh, we want to go a bit further down to get for pets. And that will give us the endpoint with pets on the end of it. So what I'm going to do is just copy that over and paste that in. And there we can see it's going to have our endpoint uh, with slash pets. And we also need to put another forward slash on the end of it. So it'll look like that. So it'll be our endpoint forward slash pets, uh, pets and then another forward slash on the end of it. So then what we're going to do is that the application is going to get the pet ID that we input into an input box there. It's going to check that the number is okay between one and three. If everything's okay, then it's going to send that request off. And so the API request will be that endpoint there plus the pet ID. So if we're looking for, for pet number two, it'll be that plus two on the end of it. So then we do a jQuery get command. And that will go to, we'll do a HTTP get request to that API endpoint. And there will be a callback function there that will return the data and the status of that request. So if the status was 200, it will come back with status uh, OK and, or st status success. And then it will, on the next line, it will put the type, which will be cat, dog, fish, whatever. And then it will put the price which will be whatever the price is. And that's all it does, and that's all we need to do. So we'll just save that now that it's got our new endpoint in, and now we need to upload it all to Amazon S3 and create a, a static website. Okay, so just back in the AWS Management Console, let's open up the S3 Management Console, and we're just going to do that in a new tab to keep the API Gateway still there. So the first thing we need to do is to create a bucket. We just call it whatever we want. We'll leave everything else as it is and click on next. We'll leave that and we will grant public permission to this. We click on next and create that bucket. Okay, so that bucket's been created. What we need to do now is upload our files.
and we just go on next. And again, we want to have public access to this and next and next and upload. And again, we need to go to properties and static website hosting. And we'll enable that. We'll put in our index.html and we click on save. So it's going to go back to that and just going to open up that endpoint for the website to make sure it's working. Okay, so there we go. So we've got our website up and running very quickly. So this should be, I know I've raced through that very quickly, but again, this should be very much old hat to you. If not, go back to section two of the course and redo it. So here is our, our get pet button that we press that will invoke uh, that get pet function. And what it will do is it will read the pet ID that we put in here. Let's just say we put in one and it will return the JSON details for that. So let's have a look at it. Let's put in ID one and get pet. Okay, so that's done that very quickly. It's gone to the API and it's had a status of success and it's returned the dog type and the price being $249, which is exactly what we would have expected. Let's try something different. So we'll put in three and that should return a fish. Look at that, a 99 cents fish and the status of that request was success or a 200 code was returned. So what we've done, we've created an API using the API gateway and we've also created an application using a static website that communicates with our API and provides dynamic capability for a static website. So you now fully understand API Gateway and I'll see you in the next one.